what a long week, but we are here on the day of rest. So to begin, I'll have a short prayer so you guys could bow your heads with me. Dear mighty and matchless Heavenly Father, I come before you as your child, your own. I ask of you to forgive me for my sins that have transpired throughout the week. Oh God, forgive us where we fall short. I ask a few of your blessing as I'm about to go in your word and share thy knowledge, thy truth, O oh God. Be there before me, touch my mind, touch my tongue that whatsoever I speak it, whatsoever I think may be of you, of knowledge of you for others to learn who you are, our God. I thank you for everything you have done. I thank you for saving me. I thank you, O oh God, through your mighty and matchless name I pray. Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior, and my King. Amen. 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 All right. Um, I'm going to dive right in. Anyone remember where I left off last Sabbath? Anyone We're remember? We're going to look at the sanctuary. Yes. I started and the last part I left off was in the only place at the table of shoebread. I I shared what the table of shoebread is and its deeper purpose, which is the typical and anti-typical of the furniture in it. And I am now at the golden candlesticks. So just a brief recap. The sanctuary is not just a dwelling place for God. It is also a refuge for his people, which we have seen in the previous videos. Um, it is also where they go to communicate with him, to ask for help when they are in trouble. And it has a deeper purpose of salvation. So it goes far deeper than just the forgiveness of sins in that time span where it was pitched, right? So now I'll be looking at the golden candlesticks. The second piece of furniture that I'll be talking about, which is in the holy place. The second piece of furniture is the golden candlesticks. There are seven lights on this candlesticks, which are always filled with oil for burning. That means it never goes out. It shall always be burning. So it is always filled with oil for everlasting light, right? Can someone find for me Exodus 27, reading from verse 20 to 21? Anyone? Exodus 27 from verse 20, 21. Sorry. Go ahead. It says, and thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive, pure oil, olive, beaten for the light to cause the lamb to burn always. In the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony, 
Aaron and his sons shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever unto their generation on behalf of the children of Israel. Okay, so we are seeing here it doesn't go out. It's always burning. The beet, the olive, gets the oil and use it to always fuel the golden candlestick. So it is always burning right through the day, right through the evening. So it never goes out as we can see there. So what we, we want to see a deeper understanding of the golden candlesticks. What do it represent at a deeper level? Can someone find for me John 8 verse 12? John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. Have the light of life. Okay, so we're seeing here Jesus letting them know that he is the light of the world. You follow him, you shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Can someone read for me 1 John 1 verse 7? You can start from 5. 5 then 7. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5, then you can jump down to 7. John 1. Yes, verse 5. Verse 5 says, Happy Sabbath, sir. Happy Sabbath. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Okay. Verse 7. Yes. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. All right. I'm going to read 2 Timothy 1 verse 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I'm also going to read Acts 26, verse 23. Acts 26, verse 23. And that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and shall show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. So we see here in these scriptures that Jesus is the representation of that everlasting light that does not go out, a light that brightens all darkness. In him you shall find no darkness he is also our savior that abolished death and brought forth life and immortality to light through the gospel so we're seeing here when we look back at the candlesticks it never goes out that light forever shining represents jesus christ that Light that cleanses all darkness. 
Um, anyone has any comments or anything to add? All right. All right, so moving on ahead, we going to look at the ter incense. So the altar of incense is close to the veil, the veil which separates the holy place from the most holy place. Incense is burned on this altar and it fills the sanctuary with fragrance. Um, can I get a reader for Exodus 30? We'll be reading from 1, 2 to 10. I'll go. Okay. You want to go, Sister Marcia? Go okay. Okay. Exodus 31 to 10. Yes. It says, And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shitten wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length of thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four squares shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns there, thereof shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. The top thereof and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold around about. Four and two golden rings shall thou make it shall thou make to it under the crown of it by two by the two corners thereof and upon the two sides of it shall thou make it and they shall be of for places for the stars to bear withal and thou shalt make the stop of shitting wood and overlay them with gold, and thou shalt put it before the, before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony. Therefore, the mercy, the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereof sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. Eight, and when Aaron lighted the lamps at Eve, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. He shall make no strange incense there, thereon, nor burn sacrifice, nor meat offerings, neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. And ten, and Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout the your generation. It is the most holy unto the Lord. Okay, so we see here that the altar of incense is very important. Every furniture is important, but when we take a closer look at the altar of incense, you see here that it brought forth a very special word here, atonement, right? It makes it clear Aaron shall make an atonement upon the arms of it once in a year right so the altar of incense is where he comes and he burns the sweet offerings unto god not 
no blood offering, no sin offering, no none of those, right? No drink offering and so forth. But we want to take an more in-depth look at the altar of incense. I'm going to share a, a picture of an example of what it looks like. Hold on. Give me a sec. Share screen. Um, share. All right. Everyone can see it? Yes. All right, so here is a depiction of the priest. This would be Aaron, for example, speaking. And in front of him would be the altar of incense. This would be the veil, right, that separates the holy place from the most holy place. But if we take a look, we also see in his hand he has something, right? We are going to look at what he has also. And the altar of incense is where he goes and he burn the sweet fragrances that would spread out throughout the sanctuary. Hold on, let me stop. All right. Bring this, yeah. So, looking at the altar of incense, can someone read for me Psalms 141, verse 2? It reads, I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. The one forty one uh, verse two. Yeah. So, uh, I read one forty two too. Uh, I said, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hand as the evening sacrifice. Okay, so here we see priors, right? Priors set forth as incense incense goes what when Aaron burn at the altar of incense it goes up and spread throughout the sanctuary when we pray our prayers go up unto our lord where he does his duty with it go for it again can someone Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can someone read for me Hebrews 7, verse 25? Hebrews 7, 25? Yeah. And it reads... Wherefore is he, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So 27, sorry. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who needeth not daily as those did high those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's for he is for this he did once when he offered up himself okay so just like all our prayers go up and Jesus, as our high priest, take them and intercede for us to the Father. It's a representative, as you would look at the altar of 
incense right before you enter the most holy place we have there the altar of incense which when Aaron burns it goes up spread throughout the sanctuary so here we see a representative a purpose looking at the type and the anti-type where it represents one literal on earth air where the sanctuary was in the past and we see here prayer so forth would then be represented as burning on the incense going up for us now in our time when we pray our prayers go up to christ christ as our high priest intercedes for us to the father now going forth right we we are walking through we enter through the gate we reach in the courtyard we have passed through the courtyard we have been in the holy place we see where the furniture is represent and the deeper purpose behind them pointing to christ now we are going in the next apartment of the sanctuary which is the most holy place so stepping through the veil you would find yourself in the most sacred part of the tabernacle the most holy place there is only one piece of furniture in this room the ark of the covenant exodus 25 verse 10 reading from verse 10 to well 22 but i'll read and they shall make an ark of shitting wood two cubits and half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half of breadth thereof and a cubit and a half of height thereof very precise and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within and without shall thou overlay it and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about and thou shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them in the four corners thereof and two rings shall be in the one side of it two rings in the other side of it and thou shalt make staffs of shitting wood and overlay them with gold and thou shalt put the staffs into the rings by the sides of the ark and the ark shall be born with them the staff shall be the rings of the ark and shall not be taken from it and thou shalt put unto the ark the testimony which i give thee and thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat and makes one cherub on the on the one end and the other cherub on the other end even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims and the two ends thereof and the cherubim shall stretch forth their rings their wings and eye covering the mercy seat with their wings and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be and thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that i shall give thee uh, 22 and there 
I will meet with thee and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So we see here, there's a lot going on here, right? So they were gave specific instructions on how to create the Ark of the Covenant. One, shittim wood, two, covering with pure gold. And different than the other, different than the other furniture. Can someone tell me what difference was there when making the ark? Something specific was said here. Anyone? Yeah, the staffs that shall not be removed. Okay, there you go, sister. The staffs shall not be removed. If we take a look back on all the other furnitures, the staffs were not in it every day. They were taken out and, you know, could be put back in. But they, there was a specific order given here. Make the staffs in it. They shall not be taken out. Can anyone here tell me what would happen if someone was to try to take them out or try to move it without the staffs? They would die. They would die. They would die. So God, when God gives us specific instructions, it is to be followed. One, it's for our own good. God has never, ever given his people instructions that does not have a deeper purpose. Sometimes we tend to don't know what's this for? Why was I told to do this? And tend to be stubborn and disobedient. But we have to pay for that, which you will you will see happening over and over to God's people in the Bible. They tend to disobey. They tend to not listen. Do as they feel like, which equals them suffering, which they did not know and came to realize that God's instructions were for a specific reason to preserve them themselves. So we see here the mercy seat was made and placed at the top where two cherubims cover it, looking towards it face to face. And when God is to communicate with the priests thereof or his people, his presence would come upon the mercy seat. So if we're looking at it, the mercy seat would represent the throne thereof of God, where he will come and reside. So if we look at how it is situated, the most holy place only consists of that one furniture, that one throne. Just like if you would venture in a castle, for example, different parts, different rooms, but there is only one throne room. 
And in that throne room, you will only see one furniture there, which is the throne for the king where he sits. And people would come before the king with their arguments, with their issues, and he would give out commandments how to handle these issues or how to settle disputes or it is where he gives orders. So we are seeing here a prime example of what the ark represents and the mercy seat. But we're going to look at it from a, another way. Remember, the mercy seat is placed upon the top. So inside it says there are the testimony of God. But is it the testimony alone that is in it? A question I'm asking. No. Okay. There is not just the testimony. And what does the testimony represent, my sister? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. So, the Ten Commandments. Can someone find for me Hebrews 9, verse 4? Ask for a reader. Hebrews 9, 4? Yes. It says, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the co covenant. Okay. So let me, let me share my screen share right uh no yeah so here it is a depiction of maybe an image of maybe what it would look like and here you see the staffs running through the rings two on this side two are on the other side and here you see the cherubims facing towards the mercy seat, their wings spread. Inside, you see the commandments, the two tables, the Aaron rod air, which budded, and the pot of manna. Anyone know why Aaron rod is placed in the ark? Anyone? No answer? All right. Aaron Rod is placed here because he will be the head priest at this point in time. So Say, say, for example, someone else was the representative there. They would, their rod would be placed in the ark. And you are going to see why going forward. God gave you that authority to be the one that would enter into the most holy place. And here he leaves a representative to show that he is authorized to go there. For example, you're in a workplace and the manager says, Olin, you're now the, the senior manager or the general manager, right? You are in charge of all the other workers. You would be given a pin or something to 
signify your authority. So you, it would be shown that you are the one that is maybe, I don't know if I'd say second in command or third in command or some fourth. So he was given the right and the authority to enter into that place. So the, his rod that budded was left in the ark. And if we realize there is a leaf growing out of his rod, right? So it is something that has life. It is growing. There is growth there taking place on his rod, giving it the name Aaron Rod that budded. Now, if a tree is dying, the leaf on it would dry out and wither and die. Aaron's rod placed in the ark representing, giving him, showing that he is the one that is representing as the high priest that is going to do the duties of God and he has the authority to go in there, right? And the budded part on there would say he is alive. He has life. So in it, the part that had manna, Aaron's rod that budded and the pen and God's commandments are placed in the Ark of the Covenant. All right. Now, I'll be looking at another thing that was not outlaid, but I'm going to share on it. And that is the anointing oil and incense. And can I get a reader? Oh, this one is long. So I have it long. I'm going to read. Exodus 30, 22. Can you guys join me there? Exodus 30. Verse 22. I could read it. You could read it? Okay, yeah. wonderful, my brother. Oh, it's, it's still sharing. You can see it? Are you, got, you find it in the Bible? Yes, I can see it. Yes, I can see it. Okay, Exodus 30, 22 to um, 38. Okay. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thee, take thou also. No, make, make, make it see where it is. I, I, I okay. will read it until I want. Yes. Right, yes. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee the principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 200 and 50 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and of oil, olive, and in. And thou shalt make it an oil of an holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecaries, of the apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the laver on his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whatsoever thou touchest them, whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, 
they shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall this not be poured, neither shall he make any other like it. After the composition of it, it is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be put off from his people, shall be cut off from his people. And the, sorry, and the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spice, stacte, and onica, and galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together and pure and holy. And thou shalt be some of it, very small, and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. Most holy. Um, 37. And, ah, yes. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof, it shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto, even shall even be cut off from mm. his, people. his people. All right. So we are seeing here the incense and the oil. Right, so we are seeing here what comes together to make up the incense that is burnt and which spreads throughout the sanctuary. But we're also seeing here the purpose for this oil. It is to sanctify and to anoint not just the instruments thereof that is in the sanctuary, but it also to be only and a representative unto Christ. Going forward, we will see when Christ is baptized and the Holy Spirit comes down like as of a dove from above and anoints him. And here we see that each and every furniture and their purpose is anointed by oil also. So they are made holy and precious uses in the sanctuary, which we know when it goes deeper, it represents Christ and our salvation. So we are seeing here that the oil is important as well. It plays a very specific role in the sanctuary also. All right? Would you so no. that, that Go on ahead, brother. Is, would you say that that oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit? Yes. There you go, my brother. It and is then, us. And then when the, 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 the specific instruction given that no one should um should put it up on any ordinary person or should make any like it, then that again becomes important because it, it it has special significance to the Holy Spirit. And if you make something like it. Then you you are you are you you, you become maybe get a blasphemy. So God say you cut it, you cut you off. And you know what it means to be cut off, off, right? To be killed. To, you you, you, you die. You just simply drop dead. You die. So it is also the oil is also very important. It is very. That's why I 
put it there because as I was studying and going through, I'm like, whoa, 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 breaks right there. Yeah. But the oil is also very important in the sanctuary. It may not be a furniture, which you can see, and you, but it, it is what anoints each and every piece of furniture. And when you look back at Christ, Christ, the Holy Spirit came down and anointed him when mm -hmm. he baptized and for him to go forth and start in his ministry. So the, it is very important, as Brother David said, it represents the Holy Spirit in that depiction, if we are to look at it. Um, sir, um, just one last point, I'm sorry. There's a scripture that says that... Um, Go they, you can they, read it, man. Speak of as, as though Aaron anointed, something like that, and the oil run down his beard, talking about unity in the church. Is that the oil yes. that, that was not anointed, Aaron, and he run, run down his beard, run down to his skirts. I was I don't remember exactly where that text is found, but you you know you look at the connections here. So represent represent the Holy Spirit in the church. You see, it, 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 it's a very deep, very very important. Topic. Very very important. I know that scripture, but I don't can't recall where it is at this moment either. Let me see if I can find it. All right, Go brother. Ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead until I, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. So the 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 next thing we are gonna look at is the happenings in the sanctuary. One the daily things that proceed to happen in the sanctuary and a specific early duty that is to happen in the sanctuary. So one, in the courtyard, God's people would come and make a sin offering. So the sin offering is an offering that they would offer up for their sins that they have committed. Can someone read for me Leviticus 4, reading from verse 3 to 7? Um, while, while you're looking for that, the text is of Psalm 133, verse 1 and 2. Psalms 173? 133. Okay. Verses Psalm. 1 and 2. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirt of his garments. And verse 3 says, As the dew of Aaron and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even like life forevermore. And Psalm okay. 133, verse 1 to 3. Thank you for that, brother. Thank you for that, brother David. Thank you. All right. Um, can someone read for me Leviticus 4, 3, 3 to 7? Anyone found it? Leviticus 4, verse 3? Yes. To 7 says... If the priest that is anointed of sin, do sin, sorry, do sin. according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he hath sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood 
and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Okay, so as you see, as I was stating out earlier, the altar of incense, as it says even in Psalms, would depict our prayers going up as incense, right? So the sins would then, the blood would then be placed on the arm, some at the foot thereof, and the incense, which you know, burns and goes up and spread throughout and behind um, the veil. The, Go on, brother. Um, sorry, the, the, blood, the, the altar of incense, they put the blood on the horns of the altar, but the blood was poured at the foot of the altar. Of the foot. Outside yes. The door. Oh, the sorry. Door. Yes, 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 right. yes, yes. Sorry. Thank you for correcting me there. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So it's the altar, the burn offering that it's placed on the horn and the foot. Thank you so much for correcting no. me. Come again, brother. The blood is placed on the horns of our incense inside the first apartment. But the yes. blood, the, the bulk of the blood is poured at the foot of the horn of bird sacrifice outside. Outside. Oh, so Read the one that is poured at the foot is the one outside. Right. Read it again. Read it again. Okay. Read if the again. priest but that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring forth this. For his sin, which he had sin, a young bullock, without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering, and he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood, and bring it, okay, and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of, yes, of the altar of sweet incense before the Lord, which is in the tabernacle of the congregation and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of, yes, thank you, at the bottom of the altar of burnt offering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One sharp one. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you, brother. I said, I said. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Um, sorry, sorry if we cut you one more time. Yeah. Um, If we notice in all circumstances, the priest... Whenever the priest is offered a sacrifice for himself and his family after a bull cow, mm -hmm. there is a chapter that tells you the different category of persons, the ordinary sinner, the political leader, and the priest, what offering they offer. And yes, I saw case, that. Yes, I saw priest, that. Right. In every case, the priest offer, offer a bull, a, a, a bull cow. The religious yeah. leader must take the lead. Most you know, his, his sins is, is more heavier than everybody else guys in the religious system. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. And I saw, I saw that. A bull cow, and in, in this case, it's a bull cow. Every time the priest is always a, a big bull cow, he must have a yeah. for his sins. Yeah, thank you. All right, so now we change here again. So the sanctuary, right. At the sanctuary, there are morning and evening sacrifices. Can someone read for me Numbers 28, verse 4, just to solidify this? Numbers 28, 4. 28. 
the one lamb shall thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shall thou offer at even. Okay, so there is sacrificing morning and evening, right? The sanctuary was the center of yearly feast. It is depicted in Leviticus chapter 23, right? All work, I can go ahead and read that in your time. I'm not going to go on the other specific yearly feast that takes part, but it was the center of them all. All were invited to come and offer personal sacrifices for their sins. That's in Leviticus 4 also. Each service reminded the people of a coming redeemer. This sanctuary or the tabernacle was their church in the desert during their journey from Egypt to Canaan. God had a very specific plan for this building. So the morning and evening services signify the reconsecration of the congregation to God and their constant dependence upon him. The children of Israel, although they had confessed their sins, were to afflict themselves on the day of which they, they had to afflict themselves. Atonement. Atonement. Otherwise, their sins would be returned upon them. Can someone read from Leviticus 23, 27 to 29? Leviticus 23? Yes, 27 to 29. 27 to 29 says, Also, on the tenth day of this, of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay. And ye shall do no... And he shall Continue. do no work in the, that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be put, he shall be cut off from among his people. Wow. Okay. Okay, so they had to look into themselves and prepare. They had to. Once the day of atonement coming, you will know. You, I doubt anyone at that time. I, I'm not. I, I'm not sure. Was it there? But I doubt there were not no smiling faces. Everyone had to be seriously contemplating, looking deep within themselves to find all wrongs, where I went wrong there. Did, did I upset brother David there and was wrong? Did I say something that upset my God? Did I? So not just the priest, Everyone had work to do. Every single person had a duty to do at the coming of the day of at one moment, as I would call it, as we would call it. All right. So going forward again. In other words, they were instructed that eternal life was there, was theirs 
as they continued to be obedient through faith until the end. Can someone read for me Ezekiel 18, 20, verse 24, and, some, and 33, verse 13. So Ezekiel 18, verse 24, and Ezekiel 33, 13. Ezekiel 18, 24. And yep. I have 43. Ezekiel 18, 24. But when the righteous turned away from his righteousness and committed his iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he has done shall not be remembered. In his trespass that he has trespassed and in his sin that he has sinned, in them yep. shall he die. He shall die. You have the other one, sister? Yes, sir. Um, is it 13 of 33? Um, yes. All righty, here goes. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered but for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Okay. Oh. Wow. Okay. 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 So the people at that time, they know. They know. That's why they had to really look into themselves. Once they see the signaling of the day of atonement coming, worry time. They had to look into themselves because they know the specification of the sanctuary and what it represented. Not just forgiveness of sins at a daily basis or sins be cleansed. They know that it leaded to a greater purpose, which is their salvation, which equally brings about their eternal life. They know. So, if even a man think it in him, who oh, am righteous and nothing me do not wrong, he has to really look into himself because they know if there is even one, even one, they're getting it. So, it was a procedure that not to be rushed but had to be done diligently through faith, through God, looking into oneself, acknowledging one's sin and bringing it forth to God. If we realize today, persons just go on their knees, pray, bop, bop, bop. some prayers even so fast you have to wonder at times if, like, persons just say, you know what, I'm just going to pray ask forgiveness, that's it. Boom, bam, door lock, boom, everything good. Everything good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even us are guilty of it. Sometimes we're in so many of our rush, we just jump on our knees, oh, God, forgive me for my sins, and I'm gone. Thinking everything is okay. But if we see here, we have to really look and identify them and confess them unto God. And the thing is, before I come around CFMI, and I was going to Sunday church, this, 
That is why I really went in depth with this study because I did not know about the sanctuary service thing. I did not. It was just go to church, preach a preach, hear what the preacher say, sing two songs, roll up my hand, I'm gone home. That is it. There was nothing more, nothing less. That was it. And present Bible study. Bible study was what? Every Wednesday? Yes, Bible study was every Wednesday. And majority of time, believe me, when I went into Bible study, I don't remember half of what they talked about because half of the topic was their life. Trust me. Half of that session was the pastor telling his past life and what happened and God delivered him. And one little fraction of it was about the Bible. That was Bible study. And I never forget, I came around and Sheldon, I go to Sheldon's Bible study and hear him out and I'm like, what? I you know the Bible that day? And then I got invited to, there was a session going on in Aruba with Pastor and Brother Sylvester years ago. And I joined in and they were talking about prophecy going deep. And I'm telling you, I was so glued. You couldn't take my face off of that screen. Not to remember, I didn't eat dinner yet, I'm hungry. I, just, I was just in the, don't know fully know what them talking about, but pieces I start click. And I'm telling you, when I really dig deep and figure out that the sanctuary was so important, important I was like whoa I was astonished and that's why I decided to go slow with this study because just like me there are a lot of persons out there don't even know this because as you know a lot of persons have this belief the Old Testament done and gone with and the New Testament now so they, they only study one part of the Bible. They will hear them talk about Elijah, yes, Moses, yes, I'm to hear, I'm to hear rest. All of that cover up. It's like one sheet over it. And you're not going to want to pull off a sheet and really take time and study and realize they go deeper. So I decided I'm going to go really deep in this one explaining the sanctuary which as you see i take time out and do it furniture by furniture purpose behind purpose just so that if someone else sees this video they will see that there is more to be learned it goes deeper so continue on the day of atonement, Leviticus 23, 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, at one month. And it shall be holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, and to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. 29. And for, for, um, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul shall I destroy from among his people. Stop right there. You realize what will be destroyed? The soul, the soul will be destroyed. 
did not say the body. It says the soul, 31. He shall do no manner of work, and it shall be a stat statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from at evening, from evening to evening, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. The importance of the Sabbath day. So go in. Go on, brother. I'm sorry. I heard you made a, a little emphasis a while ago. I'm kind of wondering where you're, what you, what you are trying to, the point you're trying to go forward. I drive into Genesis two verse seven. Um, you said that the soul must be afflicted, not the body. Yep. It says that the Lord found the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. so anybody speak of when the Lord speak of the soul, the most be afflicted is referred to the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the soul is a person. The 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 and the body, the soul is body plus breath. Plus plus. Right, plus breath. Okay. The body plus, plus, okay. plus the breath. breath. Of life. Right. Okay. The soul, you brother Olian, is a soul. Yes. I am a soul. Yes. All right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. All right. On this day, Day of Atonement, two goats were chosen for a special work. The first goat was offered as a sacrifice. No sins were confessed over this animal. His blood was used for cleansing. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people to bring its blood inside the veil and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Leviticus 16 verse 15. So the high priest brought this blood into the most holy place. So he shall make atonement for the holiest place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel because of their transgression from all their sins. Before the high priest did this, as we all know, there was the time of affliction. Everyone had to look into themselves. Now, throughout the daily workings, right? The priests, people would come, give their sin offering, it be killed, burnt. The high priest or the priest thereof would then sprinkle that blood on the veil. So the blood was constantly being sprinkled on the veil, right? So anyone can tell me why that happens? What procedure is being done there? What is being done in the sanctuary there? Anyone? Christ is cleansing the record of the sins of the people for the whole year. Okay, the go veil, in there. The veil represents Christ fresh, I remember, as, as pointed out in Hebrews. But at that point, um, the, the high priest, Jesus Christ, 
is cleansing the 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 the, 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 the sins of the people that have been recorded in the sorry the typical sanctuary is here. The you're telling the all the sins of the people have been recorded there for and and, and 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 so when the priest right goes in and sprinkle it on the veil, so that means it is poured there, right? Sprinkled, sprinkled, not poured. Sprinkled. Yeah, sprinkled. That's what I said. Right. When he goes in and sprinkle it on the veil, Be right. On the veil. Okay, in so the, in the most holy place, right? Yes. So yes. The, 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 the blood that he sprinkles from the offering which the people does for their sin is right. poured there in the sanctuary, the veil. So at the day of atonement, he has to go in to cleanse all the sins that is stored on the veil there, all the uncleanness, all the transgressions, all the sins of the people. Right? Am I right? Yeah. Remember okay. you read earlier, remember you read earlier where the, the priest's blood, the, the priest who, up, who, who committed sin and the bull cow was killed and the yes. blood was sprinkled on the veil as well? Yes. Right. So that priest now, whose blood was sprinkled there at that time of the year, then the, the, the blood sprinkled there is the pleading for his case, for his sin to be removed. Oh, well. okay. Yes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So on that day, as it stated, slots were drawn, right? Lots were drawn. And one of the two goats will take a specific role. Now, going forward, when the priest came out of the sanctuary, he symbolically carried all the sins that had been confessed during the past year of the temple services. He went directly to that goat that had a specific role. Now, he is represented as the scapegoat and symb sim symbolically transfer those sins to this animal. Can someone read for me Leviticus 16, verse 21? 21 says, 21 says, And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgression and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Okay. So... 22, and 22 says, And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. In the wilderness. So the scapegoat is then led out into the wilderness, right? So it is then released into the wilderness. So let's look at it. The blood... Oh, let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, let me skip something. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Man, check. So we see here that the sins were placed on the scapegoat. The scapegoat gets then released, right? So that goat would represent who? Satan. Satan, right? Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people 
Leviticus 16, 15. Leviticus 16, verse 15. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil. Do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. Sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. 16. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel, because of their transgressions in all their sins. And so he shall do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. So all that sin is placed on the scapegoat, which represents Satan. So the, so the first goat represents who now? Answer me now. The goat that was killed represent Christ. Oh, exactly. And the goat, the goat that lived in going live, but in going perish, in going to starve. In going He's gonna in die. An uninhabited place in going to starve to death. He's in, in gone in gone die. Any way I look upon it, yeah. that scapegoat is gonna die. Um the and then he's gonna bear all the sins. He's going to die for all the sins for everybody who has ever committed, who ever accepted Jesus Christ, who Jesus blood cover. Mm -hmm. So Christ, Christ, um, how I, how I understand it, how I get it, Christ take the uh, go to God, mm -hmm. ask God to charge the sins of his children to him that he paid for at Calvary. And mm -hmm. then when he's going to put it upon Satan, Satan pay the penalty for all those sins. Yep, we're going there, my brother. Okay. The, the blood of the Lord's goat sanctified the claims of the law in regards to the confessed sins of the people which had accumulated in the sanctuary throughout the year. Atonement was thus made for the sanctuary, or, in other words, it was declared free from sin. Although each individual had confessed their sin throughout the year and they had been forgiven, the records of the sin still remained in the sanctuary. When this record was blotted out, the atonement or reconciliation was complete. Leviticus 16.20 This Ceremony took place in the most holy place before the Ark of the Covenant and represented the eye, the eye point of the services. So the Day of Atonement, very, very important. The high priest representing Christ, our mediator, now, from the holy place in the tabernacle, bearing the confessed sins. We are going through it, right? So, he bear the sins. Satan, which we know thus representing the scapegoat, all sins were placed on him and he received, the, now bearing the ultimate penalty of the confessed sins of the righteous. So, scapegoat release died, right? So, Christ representing the high priest. The high priest representing Christ here. So, we see it both typical and anti-type going on here. So, question to everyone. Is there a heaven? Is there a sanctuary in heaven? Yeah. Everyone hear me? Yes. Because Christ is our high priest. And the reason why I ask, I know we all know this, but as coming from a point where I did not know this, I usually read in the Bible, Christ is our high priest. 
And it was sung a lot in church at those times. Christ our high priest, Christ our high priest. No one really know what was going on. We were just saying Christ is our high priest and it was that full stop, bam, period. Nothing after, nothing before, nothing. So yes, the earthly sanctuary was made like the sanctuary in heaven. The Bible tells us that this heavenly sanctuary is one that the Lord pitched and not man in Hebrews 2, Hebrews 8, verse 2. The earthly sanctuary was a copy, a shadow of heavenly things. It was modeled after the heavenly sanctuary, which was shown to Moses. So we could learn about what happens in step. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with ants, which are copies of true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God or behalf. Hebrews 9.24. The earthly sanctuary served as symbolized the ministry of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. And various elements point toward the amazing gift of Christ Jesus. I will make a stop here tonight, 8.34. I have an appointment. Tomorrow we will be diving even further. So what we cover tonight, we go over the sanctuary, the typical and anti-typical, right? We show reference of the parts of the sanctuary so far, what they represented, and the deeper meaning behind them leading to Christ, right? We show the day of atonement, what happened on the day of atonement. God's people have to afflict themselves, find the sins, identify the sins, present them to God, right? The high priest duty, lots were John, scapegoat selected, went in the sanctuary, cleansed the sanctuary, brought back the sin, placed it on the scapegoat. Scapegoat then got released into the wilderness where it dies, right? Seeing where the scapegoat represents Satan, right? Now, We'll be moving up in gear tomorrow. We'll be taking a deeper look at the heavenly things that is going on with our high priests in heaven. The duties being carried out in heaven and what is to be carried out so and we have the timeline which we are going to look at the 70 weeks going forward so we have more to cover tomorrow look forward we are diving in deep diving in at fast Thank you, everyone. I'm going to pray to close out this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this knowledge. As you have said, one sharpens one. We sharpens each other when it comes to your knowledge. 
we gather together to study your word. I ask of you, O oh God, to give us that knowledge, that wisdom to understand even more and even apply it, O oh God, that we may share it with others, not just keep that knowledge to ourselves, to those much is given, much is required, O oh God. Thank you for this year, Sabbath day. Thank you for carrying us through yet another week, my God. Thank you for everything you have done for us. Through your mighty and matchless name, I pray. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And amen. 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 Blessing and happy. Happy Sabbath, everyone. To you too, sir. Happy Sabbath, sir.